So what's happening, you two? Welcome to a John John TV. You know this very special episode. I have the new and improved studio. Not a lot has changed, just a little bit of paint on the wall. But anyway, man, I'm back off a of hiatus, man. I've been sick for about five days, man. So finally back. I've been keeping an eye on my stats on the channel. And we actually surpassed 500 subscribers. Yes. It's been a long road to get to this point, but I appreciate every last one of you that supports my videos. Future subscribers, you're going to love it here. I drop basketball content weekly, do reaction videos, my take on uh, basketball in general. Um, I got the underrated series, Iron Sharpens Iron series. So go ahead, search through my channel, see what you like. I think uh, I have something for everybody if you're a basketball fan. But anyway, right here, I got a reaction video. Michael Jordan had it easier than LeBron James. Hmm. Very interesting take. And this is by the Player's Choice. I love their channel. They have some great topics that they debate on every day. They got a new video coming out, man. Um, 111,000 subscribers. So not going to waste too much more of your time, man. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get to the video. Mike actually won, whereas you're just saying they did the I same thing in terms of making bro. the finals. Yeah, you understand that. You understand a team, a team that was that had the best record in the regular season ever in the NBA had to go out their way to get Kevin Durant in order to beat one LeBron James. Well, even yeah, even it got to a point. It got to a point where this team that was the greatest regular season team ever, one of the star players on our team, Draymond Green, goes out publicly and says they mentally had us. If KD doesn't show up to save us, we might be talking about LeBron in a different light. I also think when it comes to LeBron James, mm. y'all don't give the same grace to his career that y'all have given to other players. Like the way I say that, you know, Michael We're not Jordan. We're talking about other players. You're talking, talking about MJ. MJ as well. He's one of those players. No. You mentioned that too, Miles, because when you talk about improvement, I mean, this guy has improved every year. And then when I say improved, I mean improved in every aspect of his game. He improved as a shooter. He improved as a ball handler. He improved as a defender. All right. So, um... After watching the first minute of this, man, it seems like they're going to heavily favor LeBron James in this debate. Um, you have these two guys right here, and um, like I said, in heavy favor of LeBron. Um, personally, I don't think that Jordan gets as much grace um, pre-championship, but of course, um, some people may uh, beg to differ on that. But prior to Michael Jordan winning his first championship, you had Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, they were running the league. So everything changed once Michael Jordan got that first ring. And then through his 90s campaign, he had a lot of grace, but deservedly so. So anyway, interesting to hear what they got to say. He improved his IQ and all of those things, even at a young age, were far more advanced than even guys that came out of college that played for big time college basketball coaches. And a guy that 22 years old taking a team to the NBA finals. I mean, that hasn't happened since never with that Cleveland Cavaliers team. Nobody had done that in Cleveland since he had done that. So the expectation at that point is now championship or bust as long as he's here and once he and they got, didn't meet his expectations no, which would explain why he left mm -hmm. which and which would explain because when why the going he gets tough chill out over there. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the going gets tough it would be more that i think that the the team that was built around him was not nearly as sufficient as the team that was built around michael jordan i think that the team that was built around him I okay so um let's do a little bit of uh comparing and contrasting here so um, LeBron James, whenever he dragged that 2007 uh, Cavs roster to the NBA Finals, they had a lot of scrubs on that roster. He didn't really have a true number two. Um, his number two guy was uh, Zugranis Ilgaskis. I'm sorry, Zugranis Ilgaskis. I, I can't pronounce this guy's last name for anything. It's just me. I'm the problem. You're the problem. But anyway, um, but you know, you had players like Daniel Gibson, Larry Hughes, you know, um, uh, Vera Jow wasn't really um, an adequate team if you're going to really compete for a championship. But let's compare that to Michael Jordan. Whenever Michael Jordan first got to Chicago, they didn't really have a lot of stars there also. And they lucked up getting Scottie Pippen. Seattle actually drafted Scott Pippen, and they traded him to, um, to Chicago. Horace Grant, they got him in the draft. So with Chicago – they drafted better than Cleveland did. Cleveland, they didn't really have a lot of 
good picks. Um, I'll say partially at fault to how good they were in the regular season, um, especially after LeBron's third season in the league. But with Chicago, patience being there um, for about when he got drafted in 83, um, made to their first finals in seven years. You know, seven seasons later, just being patient, working through all the kinks, getting those growing pains in um, in NBA playoffs, uh, facing Detroit, Cleveland, um, those type of squads, um, New York, you know, that actually made that team a stronger team. So I wouldn't necessarily say that Michael Jordan's team was a stronger team than LeBron. I just say that Michael Jordan was a little bit more patient sticking with the team compared to LeBron was when LeBron decided to leave in 2010. So anyway, back to the video. I think that they looked at him and said, we're getting to the NBA championship every year with this guy. How long did it take the boys to build that around Michael Jordan? It took them seven, eight years. Okay, eight yeah, years, eight. and LeBron left Cleveland after how many years? He, he left after seven years. And so, what did LeBron do in year yeah. eight then? And year eight, what happened? The well, that's not, that, The biggest that, meltdown in NBA history. That's completely right? different, and the reason why that's completely Great different. Great question, Lo. LeBron left, and they had that very big meltdown in the 2011 NBA Finals against the Dallas Mavericks. So you left, and still in your first season, it didn't work out. So that's just really a key component to this discussion that patience is key, no matter how stacked the team is. Just like with the L.A. Clippers, I just dropped a video about them. I'm having it at the top right up here. But, you know, with the L.A. Clippers, I have pretty much came to the conclusion after the first six games that it wasn't a good move that took place because you had two stars. I'm sorry, four stars in the lineup with Westbrook, Kawhi, Paul George, and now you got James Harden added to the mix. The only reason why it's working now is because Russell Westbrook decided to come off the bench. So, you know, sometimes if you put a whole bunch of stars together and won't won't necessarily work itself out, players got to figure out how to play together. Sometimes it take more than one season. You know, you might not get the results until second, third season down the line. So patience is key. But anyway, back to the video. I don't think it's completely different. I don't know this completely. Well, the reason why it's completely different is because, like you just said with Michael Jordan, it took him eight years with continuity with the same guys. So he's on the same crew with John Paxson. He's on the same crew with Scottie yeah, Pippen. Three he's on the same crew with Horace Grant. He's on the same crew with Cliff Livingston. He's on the same crew with B.J. Armstrong. Meanwhile, LeBron James goes to Miami, and this is a totally new system. This is a totally new gig. And this is a testament to his greatness because you expect once he jumps onto that crew that it's just supposed to work out, not we're, even establishing roles. Yeah, with Chris him Bush, picking yes. the team in the Coach and the players. And you don't get you don't yes. get continuity arguments when LeBron's the one who actively left the team. Thank He's you. the reason it wasn't continuity. He if he wanted continuity, I can't I gonna... can't say LeBron. Great point. Great point. He is the reason why there weren't any continuity there. And if you look at it, they were building a team around him. Mo Williams wasn't a bad player. They signed Shaquille O'Neal, which he was a little bit past his prime at that point, but. They were making very strong attempts to try to get some star players, some firepower around LeBron James. And they had a really good roster. If you look at it, his last two seasons in Cleveland um, prior to the decision, they were the top seed in the NBA, not just the East, in the whole NBA. They were the number one overall seed. So the issue was playoff success. You get eliminated by uh, Orlando 2009. You get eliminated by Boston in the 2010 uh, semis. That's not because the roster's bad. It's because they didn't have the continuity. I'll say give him one more year if LeBron would have stuck with Cleveland, pass the decision. I believe they probably would have been NBA champions. His first go around in Cleveland because they were right there. You know, so anyway, back to the video. Did not have continuity when he's the reason there wasn't continuity? If, I'm not giving him that belt. That doesn't yes. Matter. If he wanted continuity in coaching, he just should have stayed in Miami. Well, but he kept moving around, so he does. He's the one who doesn't want continuity. That's crazy. Well, first of all, he does because if you look at continuity, like you just said in in Miami, Eric, he didn't get to pick the coach. Eric Spolster was already there. Yep. In mm-hmm. fact, Eric Spolster he wanted him fired. So that's not mm-hmm. happening. All right, so this is what I'm seeing here. So we got um, Team Mike. <laughs> Team LeBron, man. Yeah, well, so that's, that's why he's sitting player. in his that's orientation. Great, great guy right there. Yeah, great goat right there. Pat Riley? Pat no, no. LeBron trying to get somebody fired. Yeah, great goat, man. He wanted to, he, he had great goat, man. Well, the reason, well, the reason, great goat. Does nobody act like Michael Jordan couldn't make a demand? 
Absolutely. And this is this is my thing. This is where they're not. He, you're he being, you're being want, so you disingenuous. Feel Jackson fired? You're being so disingenuous. To answer your question there. So back in the 80s, players did not have stroke like that, like they do nowadays. Michael Jordan, to go making demands, yeah, you're the greatest player on, on earth. I mean, you still have Magic Johnson, but, but man, like, who are you, man? Like, all right, cool. I'll trade you to where you want to get traded to, but Michael Jordan wasn't that guy because you know what? Michael Jordan, he wasn't a quitter. He wanted to beat those other stars rather than join them. Like I said, man, everything worked out perfectly when Scottie Pippen got moved to the Chicago Bulls after the trade on draft night. Getting Horace Grant. Work with your guys to get them on that level that you want to get them to rather than bouncing from team to team. So, yeah, Michael Jordan probably could have made a demand, but it's not like nowadays where you got a player like James Harden. Every chance he get, oh, I don't I don't like this guy anymore. I want to get traded. Oh, Daryl Morey is a liar. Get moved to the team that he requested to go to. It wasn't always like that until recently. So, yeah, Michael Jordan could have made demands, but guess what? Now the media is labeling you as a diva, a crybaby, a complainer. It's different than it is now where a player can make demands to get what he want and get very little um, criticism from the media. So, you know, yeah, Mike could have made a demand, but it would have been a whole different story than it is now. If you want to feel that Jackson, 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 but if he wanted, he wanted okay. that, he wanted that, he wanted his GM definitely gone. Definitely and gone. as much as he wanted his GM gone, to Jerry Krause's credit, he's one of the greatest GMs to ever do it. Yes, he put together a phenomenal. Oh. He is, he is. He's oh. not. Didn't he's get not. nearly as much oh, credit. What you gotta say? Like, let's be real. Let's also take into consideration that I think ultimately, mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, Michael Jordan had Phil Jackson. Yeah, he played with a great coach in college. Mm -hmm. I think there was a lot of things around Michael Jordan. That LeBron James did not have it. He had to just ultimately. And he chose to not to have. These are all his choices. Eric Spoelstra was the best coach in the NBA, and, and he chose not to stay there. The lack of Pat, continuity. Pat Riley, was was Eric Spoelstra at the, the time. LeBron... Say, man, I'm agreeing with Low here, a hundred percent, man. Michael Jordan didn't get to choose his coach. Of course, like for anybody that knows Michael Jordan, he is definitely pro Doug Collins. He loves Doug Collins as a coach. Phil Jackson just so happened to be the guy. Coming with the Zen energy, the triangle offense, the whole nine, which I I mean, it wasn't um it wasn't Phil Jackson, it was Tex Winters, but um, but anyway, LeBron, whenever he decided to leave and go to his different teams every single time, he had the choice on who's my head coach gonna be. Who's my star player is going to be? Whenever he went from Miami back to Cleveland, they traded Andrew Wiggins to get Kevin Love. You already got Kyrie Irving there. You don't think LeBron James had any input in that decision? With the head coach, he didn't really care for David Blatt. I know. I understand. But he wanted Tyron Lue. You know, you look at L.A., you didn't think that they didn't ask him for his opinion on if he wanted Frank Vogel or not? I don't think so. LeBron James has a lot of input on who he wants around him, who he wants to be coached by, who he wants his supporting cast to be. Michael Jordan didn't have that. So, anyway, I agree, man. Back to the video. LeBron left. When LeBron left Miami, yeah. was Eric Spolstra. When he left, no, I think he's the best coach in basketball now. Okay. I 100% agree with and that. Was a, and you think time, at the time he was the best coach he in basketball? He was at worst third. He was at worst third. We'll give you with a top three. Pope no, was, no, Pope no, Pope was no, no. Was Phil Jackson the best coach when Michael Jordan started winning? No. no. Nope. Okay, then. So that argument is also nope. it's not a balance. But with that being... Nope, you had... um. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yep. I agree 100%. That argument is irrelevant. <laughs> I definitely got to check out this video right here, the Ultimate Jordan versus LeBron debate. I think this is going to be a great video, man. But anyway, man, I appreciate you watching this reaction video of me reacting to the player's choice. Of course, I love their stuff. I love their content. They drop every single day, man, every single day. So check them out. I'll have the link to their video down below in the description. And like I said before, man, thank you for 500 subs. Now... 
I got to figure out how I'm going to give that Xbox away now, man. So anyway, I'll keep y'all posted on the requirements for entering the giveaway. Of course, now we have 500 Hoop Fiends. I will be actually starting to sell this merch now. So I'm working out how I'm going to do that. But anyway, man, on to the next video. Love you. Peace.